first I want to thank the, organ the organizers, Plain Concept, for inviting me. Thank you very much. And our sponsors um, for making this happen. Um, my name is Rana. I am a core team member of Babylon JS. Uh, I am first and foremost a web developer. Uh, I've been developing since late 90s. I, my expertise is JavaScript and TypeScript. I have been developing um, Babylon since 2013 um, and a core member since 2016. Um, I'm writing uh, on my blog, which is not quite updated, I have to say, um, but aren't all of our blogs not updated. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter. Um, that's also my nickname on GitHub. Um, that's about it. So what we will talk about, uh, we're going to first talk about a bit about Babylon.js. Is anyone here knows Babylon.js, been using Babylon.js? Uh, I hope a lot more will use it afterwards. Uh, we'll talk about our principles, how we develop, how we think, and see how it connects to WebVR. When we get to WebVR, we'll talk about uh, the specifications, see what WebVR actually is, uh, see how Babylon and WebVR connect, and we'll see how we make the experience much lighter using the, the virtual reality experience helper. Um, we'll get to code and demos at the end, and I hope we'll have some time for uh, questions. Um, let's start. So what is Babylon.js? Uh, Babylon.js is a WebGL uh, 3D engine. It's focused on gaming, since most of the 3D experiences we have is usually for gaming, but there are quite a lot of, of experiences that require 3D, like um, uh, architecture or uh, our models in, in IKEA, for example, that require also 3D models. Babylon.js offers this functionality. It's written in TypeScript. Um, right now, currently in version 3.2, we release two major releases um, every year. We try to release two major releases every year. Um, with a roadmap on GitHub, which you can follow. Um, Babylon.js is cross-browser. It works across all major browsers that support WebGL. So even Internet Explorer 11, which was the first um, Microsoft browser that supported WebGL. We are supported on mobile devices, from iOS to Android. And it's all with a single code base. Um, Babylon is uh, an open source. All of our uh, modules are open sourced under the Apache uh, 2 license, and it's all on GitHub. Um, a few of Babylon's basic base principles, how we think and how we try to develop and what we want to give the developer. So the first and f the f most important principle we have is, is KISS. Uh, keep it simple, senor, or stupid, or whatever you guys want. And we try keep, to keep things as simple as possible for the developer, so the developer wouldn't have to learn a new framework. He will just, uh, just jump in and start coding in a very intuitive way. And we offer default functionalities um, for basic features, such as uh, creating a camera or creating the lights or creating a, an environment such as um, a, the ground or a sky. So it's all with a, single, uh, with a single line of code, you can, you can achieve that. But it still lets you configure that if you want to, to change the experience a bit. Um, the second very important principle is backwards compatibility. We keep public APIs always the same. If we want to change them, we will simply add a new function, but we will never remove one. So code that runs on Babylon 1 will still run on Babylon 3 just uh, improved because we improved the shaders, for example. But the same code will still run from the first version to, of Babylon till now. Um, we also fix bugs very quickly and very efficiently. We are very active on GitHub. Um, we try to always answer issues the minute they are submitted. We are in a few time zones, actually, so we are always available, <laughs> so we can, we can always answer. Um, we have a few core team members that each take care of different issues, and it's all, it's all on GitHub, it's all open, so everyone can see that and, and understand what we're doing. Um, another, another thing that we think a bit differently about preview versions, about nightlies. Uh, our nightlies are always production ready. 
Um, we have alpha and beta versions, for example, but we would still recommend you using the beta version or the alpha version if there is a bug that was fixed. We don't fix bugs for earlier versions, but we go forward to the alpha and beta version. This is how we fix the fix bugs. So if there is a bug fix, you would probably use the alpha version, which is still fully tested. We run visualization tests on each pull request being submitted. So we are, we are sure that we're submitting something that works and, uh, and is compliant with what we want to do. Um, a bit about the features, Babylon JS features. We offer something similar to every um, um, 3D engine, a camera, and material support. We offer also PBR support straight in the, straight in the core material. PBR is physical-based uh, rendering, so things look a bit more realistic. Um, we offer um, animation API, physics integration. Um, we offer audio and post-process. Everything is included in the core, and everything is in one, one code, code base. This is, these are all features that are included in the core itself, in a single JavaScript file. Um, all of our modules are available on, on NPM, so we support UMD, CommonJS, AMD. Um, you can simply import them and use them in your ES6 code as well. Um, we also offer our own CDN for the preview and stable version. So whenever, you, if you don't want to host it yourself, you can simply use, <coughs> sorry, you can simply use our CDN. Sorry. So, apart from the core module, we have a, a few other modules that we offer. Um, we offer hardware accelerated uh, graphical user interface, so you can define your user interface using uh, Babylon code and, and have your um, user interface as part of the canvas. And it's not HTML, it's really a part of the canvas, so it's hardware accelerated. This is uh, why, why uh, hardware accelerated is written. Um, we, are, we have full support for GLTF, for the entire specification of GLTF. Uh, anyone knows who GLTF should I explain? Uh, it's, a, it's a new file format that is being supported by um, most um, major 3D users. Um, uh, you know, like Microsoft, Autodesk, Google support GLTF. Um, we also have uh, native exporters from Blender, from Maya, from Unity, from 3D Studio. So they export our file format and can be imported directly into a Babylon scene. And it, uh, it can be imported as a Babylon scene. We will soon see one in the next slide, actually. Um, we also have an HTML-based uh, viewer. So if you want to integrate uh, 3D models in your in your website, you can simply do that with a single HTML, HTML code. Um, this, this was a major uh, update in 3.2. Uh, let's, uh, let's see the Babylon playground and see a bit of, a bit of code. Um, let me quit that and see how the playground is working. I know you don't. Internet. Okay. One of my favorite features of Babylon is the playground. Uh, is it big enough? Should I zoom in? I'll zoom in a bit. Is it, is it okay? Readable at the back? Uh, so, one of this is the Babylon Playground. The Babylon Playground lets you write code and have it directly rendered next to your code to see if what you did was correct. So we have all of the Babylon, of the Babylon modules here. Um, we have the GLTF loaders. We can, uh, you can actually write here a game, which we will soon see. Um, and you can, you can save this. You can download this. Any, any of those scenes is downloadable you can, if you, if you download the zip, you can simply import it and use this code directly and start developing. There are um, a lot of examples. Uh, if we want to see uh, examples of, uh, of how, how lights are working, the code is, um, is commented. So anything, if I change something here, if I go back to the basic scene, for example, and I want to change 
um, the size of the sphere, so I can just change the size of the sphere, and it, yeah, I press run, and the sphere will change. Of course, this is a simple, uh, uh, simple example, but anything can be done here. The, um, since Babylon is written in TypeScript, we have uh, full autocomplete using the, uh, the, the TypeScript declaration, so I can, I, I can know exactly what I'm doing if I am creating, for example, a new, if I want to change the sphere, for example, I see all of the functionality I can run on this sphere. Um, this is the Babylon playground. Uh, I won't stay here too long. Um, let's see a few more. Let's see the Babylon mention, which is uh, this scene was uh, was exported from 3D Studio. It's all of the actions and everything that is defined in this scene was defined in 3D Studio and was exported to in, in a single file format, the Babylon file format. Um, let's wait for it to load. So loading it is a simple line of code. Load, file, and it will work as, as we're about to see. I'm sorry. So the, the, the demo we're about to see is a mention that was created for a previous version of Babylon. Um, it has support for the, ac the actions, the integration with, the, with user actions, so clicks, um, um, mouse movement. Um, it has support for 3D audio, which we will uh, not hear. Um, uh, it has a support for animation, it has support for the camera, it has support for uh, virtual reality, which we'll uh, see later. Um. <laughs> I need to stop downloading. <laughs> it, should be, it should be done by now. Uh. But uh, this downloads all of the assets right now. So in a single file, all of the assets are included, including textures, including sounds, including... Uh, oh, yeah, now it's just streaming the items. It will soon start. Um, so what it does, again, it's, it, it, it exported an entire 3D studio mo um, um, scene and loaded here with uh, really a single line of, uh, of code. Um, that's the mention. So right now, this is supported also on mobile. So if you open it on mobile, you will you will see this this scene and you will be able to move around. Um, there are clickable objects that can. Uh, we can go to the graveyard here, and, and declare the death of uh, Internet Explorer six. This was created when Internet Explorer six. Um, finished its, uh, its, its life and edge started. So this was uh, the scene that, that was created by Babylon for that. Um, so again, this is just a single, a single file, and we'll soon, soon see how we integrate WebVR into this, into this scene. Um, let's go back. So let's talk about WebVR and Babylon.js, how we integrated WebVR. First, a bit about WebVR. Anyone here ever used WebVR? I know, I know you did because, <laughs> yeah, I was helping a bit. And what is WebVR? WebVR is a, is a JavaScript web API to communicate with um, VR headsets, such as, such as this. It support, it, the, the idea is a single code base to all VR uh, headsets like the, like the Vive or the Oculus Rift. Um, the, it's currently in version 1.1. It's a draft still. It's not yet accepted um, by the W3C, but is supported by all major browsers. Uh, it will soon be replaced by WebXR. Uh, WebVR will not be c uh, continued. WebXR is currently unstable. Uh, but the idea is to um, 
to make augmented reality also supported by on, on the web. And Babylon JS will support WebXR the minute it will uh, it will be supported by any browser. But right now there are no browsers that support WebXR. Um, browser support. All major browsers support WebVR, but and this is always a but with web standards. Um, each browser kind of decided what devices they support. Um, Edge, for example, supports only the mixed reality uh, devices, the one I have here. Um, Firefox supports Vive and Oculus, doesn't support the mixed reality, and it's, it's, a, it's a bit of a chaos right now. Um, but eventually, hopefully, all browsers will support all headsets. Um, the browsers also support the controllers of WebVR, so every WebVR um, uh, device usually have two controllers for two hands, so um, you can interact with a web browser using two controllers with a lot, a lot, a lot of triggers. Um, and, web, and WebVR defines the callbacks and the, the, the functionalities, the interfaces actually, to communicate with those. Um, to use WebVR, um, you first need to understand the specs, you need to implement the specs, you need to render your scene, you need to uh, write the user, uh, the, the interaction with the user, you need to load uh, the controller since the WebVR doesn't define the controllers as meshes, so you can't see the controllers, you will have to do that by yourself as a developer. Um, you need to make sure performance is okay, uh, and you need to eventually write a lot of code, a boilerplate, just to get started. What we offer is a full integration with WebVR and Babylon.js. So the single code base that worked uh, with regular cameras and regular mouse movements and keyboards will work with WebVR. Um, we fully support the 1.1 spec. We supported 1.0 until um, uh, Gear VR moved to 1.1 and we removed this code. Um, we also support device orientation. Device orientation is when you move your cell phone, there is an API for, to, for the gyroscope. So you can also create an experience with a mo mobile who doesn't, that doesn't support WebVR. The Google Cardboard, if you know, uh, is, is device orientation. Um, um, it's using the device orientation to, sh to, to show the scene. This is, ex this is the, what we see in this image. This is a... Um, uh, device orientation camera. We also compensate for the lens, as you can see on the sides. Um, but this is, right now it's not supported anymore because most major browsers support WebVR already. Mobile browsers. Apart from Apple. Uh, <laughs> Apple doesn't support WebVR at all, not even in Safari. Sadly. Um, as part of the principle of keeping it simple, we offer the VR Experience Helper. The VR Experience Helper, with a single line of code, provides the basic functionality that is needed to uh, make your 3D scene virtual reality ready. So we add, for example, the HTML button, because to jump into VR, it, the browser needs to accept a user, uh, user interaction. Um, we, we abstract the basic functionality of VR, just like, like pose, uh, we can track pose, uh, we, can, um, we can teleport, which is also something that is needed for any game. I don't know if you ever experienced web VR, but if you move in web VR but still stay in place, you will lose orientation, you will probably fall down. So teleportation is a very basic functionality that must exist in every v uh, uh, VR scene. Um, we also fully support um, controllers for each and every device, so the meshes and the, the interaction with the meshes is all already implemented and part of our CDN, so it's being downloaded for you, you don't need to do anything, just a, really a single line of code and it's there. And if the browser doesn't support WebVR, we will fall back automatically to the device orientation camera. Um, if um, if, for example, the controllers don't exist, or, or the user doesn't want to, to use the controllers, we also fall back to gaze. So the user, whatever the user looks like, looks at, is the, th is the mesh that is being selected. Um, let's see that in code a bit, finally. Um, 
let's jump back to uh, edge. And see what it looks like. So let's make the, uh, the basic scene, let's make it VR ready. The scene itself has a function called create default VR experience. This single function will now make VR, make the scene VR ready, will add the button at the bottom. And once I click on, on, the but, the, on this button, the, uh, the VR environment of the operating system will open and the scene will open in, uh, in this headset. So you, s you see already that the orientation at the back, you can see that the, the device orients around, I can walk around. And well, yeah, I, I can invite someone if you want to see it, uh, how it looks like later. Um, so this is the basic scene. Now, if I if I take the controllers and open them, you will soon you will see that after a while. Long while. No. Sorry. By the way, this is the coolest uh, thing about the mixed reality headsets that you can do this. As a developer, this is a this is a the best thing that that ever happened in virtual reality. Uh, the, the, uh, a really nice thing about it is that it also detects the face, so it gives you a control of your mouse the minute you open it, and you lose control of the mouse the minute you're inside. So it's, uh, it's yeah, you see, now, now I have control of the mouse, and now I don't. <laughs> so, if I will enable interaction, this is what was missing. So what I'm telling you right now is enable interactions. Do something with the controllers as well. If I jump back in and open the cliff house, you will see, just a sec, you see I have, I have both controllers. I can use the controllers to interact with my scene. I, I'm, I hope you, you can uh, see the controllers right now because I don't see you. Um, but you can also see that when I trigger or when I click, the controller is actually showing me what I'm doing. So right now I can't do quite a lot with uh, in this scene. Let's let's do that and jump into the cliff house. Cl the cliff house is Microsoft's. Uh, I call it the Microsoft operating system for virtuality. This is not Babylon right now. This is the Microsoft environment. But if I open Edge in this environment, uh, I, can, uh, I can interact with the playground. I can also make it bigger or smaller. So if you want to see the code. Uh, so this is the scene we were at. I changed it a bit here to, uh, to interact with, um, with the, the, the sphere. So I can, if I point at the sphere and I click, I will change the size of the sphere. So I'm waiting for the, the meshes to load. And now you can see that you can also see the, 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 the this circle, the, um, the white circle that is only presented when I'm pointing at the sphere because I, I filtered that. I will soon show you the code. It's a single function that filters what can be selected and what not. So right now, if I click on the trigger, the sphere will change its size. So this is, this is the way for me to interact with meshes in the scene. Um, if we want to see the code, let's try showing it here. And if not, I will jump out and, 
and show you the code in real time. Okay, yeah. VR is not to show code. It's not for, not meant for that. So after I enable interaction, I define two functions that give me the, the currently selected mesh. This is, these are, this is the, the observable pattern, which is an integrated in Babylon. Um, and after that, all I do is get, my, get the controller that is being added and change the scaling of the selected mesh. So I know exactly what I just selected, and I can change the, the scale very easily just using this line, this line of code. Um, the predicate, the, the one that is changing what I can select, is this single function, which simply returns, in my case, returns if the, um, the mesh that I currently selected has sphere in its name or not. Um, this is a very simple demo, just to show that how, how simple it is to create interaction. Um, let's jump in back in to the Cliff House, and I'll open a few other demos. Uh, I have time, right? Yes. So another thing you can mm -hmm, that's a wrong thing. Another thing you can do is change the meshes. Mm -hmm. What did I do? Sorry. So the controllers don't want to work. <laughs> Great. Let me open the cliff house again. back to the cliff house and hopefully edge will work now. Yep. So another, another cool thing I can do is change, since I know exactly what the position of the controllers are, I can, uh, I'll just wait for, the every, for everything to load, the assets are being loaded. Um, I can replace the, those meshes with a different mesh and, sorry, still loading. Um, yep, there we go. So I know that I know, I know the full orientation of those uh, of the the two controllers. So I can now convert them to some cool I don't know light whatever and try to destroy those amazing apples. This game is uh, around 300 lines of code. I'm very good, huh? Um, and is using Babylon-only functions. The meshes of the Apple are being loaded from Remix 3D, but other than that, well, I'm missing quite a lot. But uh, other than that, um, all of the meshes um, are, are directly from Babylon.js, including the, the graphical user interface, which you can see, which is, of course, can be modified. Um, this, is, this is the module, the, the graphical user interface module that can be used in VR since VR doesn't support HTML but supports canvas manipulations. Um, another demo I wanted to show you is the mansion that we saw before and hopefully, um, I didn't click. So, the two functions that, mm -hmm. Well, 
demo effect. So using the two functions, the interaction and teleportation, we can, the minute the scene is loading, right. sorry about that, I'll wait for that to load. Uh, in the meantime, ah, there we go. It's too small right now, right? Um, so this is the mansion. This is this is the code that is required to to, to load the mansion that we saw earlier. That I hope will load uh, quicker now, and to enable the VR support in it. So. We create the default VR experience. Uh, is it too small? Yeah, I'll, I'll zoom in. Is it okay now? Yeah. Good. So we load the scene with this code, and afterwards we simply enable VR and enable teleportation. Well, of course. Um, it's my screen resolution changed for some reason. Is okay? So, so uh, what we define in the teleportation is we define um, the f the floor to which we can teleport. We can define more than one mesh. In this case, it's a single mesh that is the entire floor of the entire scene. Um, and once again, we'll have to wait for it to load a bit. Maybe in the meantime, I'll load the next demo. Um, the last demo I want to show you um, is um, SharePoint, the SharePoint spaces. Uh, SharePoint uh, lately, uh, just recently, um, presented SharePoint Spaces, which is um, a way to create 3D scenes inside SharePoint. And SharePoint is using Babylon JS to um, to show those spaces in virtual reality. Um, It's loaded. <laughs> Let's jump in here. So this is the same scene that we saw yesterday before. Simply in virtual reality. So I can teleport anywhere in the scene and I can interact with the scene using the controllers. So the same the same interaction I had with the mouse. I now have with the controllers. Um, once again, two lines of code, and your if you, if your scene is is Babylon ready, which if it's exported from 3D Studio or Blender, it already is. So you can you can use this basic functionality to uh, inter uh, to interact with the scene. Um, and again, the same this, this is the same code base. Uh, So this is this is the Babylon mansion. Um, and we'll see the SharePoint. This is uh, this is new and not yet out, the, the SharePoint spaces. Um, it was just released a few days ago. 
loading is always uh, a lot of fun. Sorry? Okay. I'll wait for this to load and show you how it looks like. Let's jump into the headset. Hmm? <laughs> well, kind of. <laughs> what, what you can do is select 3D meshes. You can also uh, present an Excel file in 3D. Um, let it load again. This is all inside SharePoint. So I can, I can see the information from this Excel file in 3D. Um, this is, of course, only the first demo. Uh, for one of the problems with this demo, for example, is there is no back button. Uh, I can't go back to the space. <laughs> this will be solved. I have, to, I have to go here and to go back. <laughs> um, but, but in general, SharePoint integrated Babylon JS to allow a web VR experience, um, which is kind of for us a seal of approval that Babylon is production ready and the VR experience in Babylon is production ready. Um, and just close this. Um, this was the last demo I wanted to show you. We'll uh, talk a bit about... Is it... Yep. Is it there? Good. So, uh, where can you get Babylon? So, as I said before, we are in, on GitHub. BabylonJS.com is our main page with a lot, a lot, a lot of other demos. So if you want to play around and see other demos and see other people who already did something, production, production websites with Babylon, you can, you can see it there. Um, and we have a very, very, very active community in HTML5 game devs. Um, we are always there. We always answer questions. We love answering questions. We love questions from users. So... You can, you can join the community, ask any question that you want. We will answer them as soon as we can. And if you have now questions, I'll be more than happy to answer them. Um, so if any, everyone, no one has any questions, I'll be here for the next hour or so if you have any questions and you want to address me directly. And other than that, thank you very much. <laughs>